Hello, the Master of Evil 7. Today is the final trial in the whole game. Things re things have gone from worse to absolutely catastrophic. Phoenix is defending a pretty terrible human being. <laughs> but he has no choice but to do this because if he doesn't then Maya's life is in jeopardy. Basically we're helping a man that pretty much just uses people as he sees fit. Hiding behind a fake smile. Unfortunately, Felix White fell for it, a quite stinker. Because he didn't have a choice considering that May was kidnapped beforehand, but even then he didn't know. He just didn't know. So now it's time to trial. But the truth will set us free. And that's all I'm gonna say to that. Let's do this. Huh. <sighs> <sighs> How did they get into this mess? That's far enough! You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix White. What? What have I done wrong? I can't allow you to owe on like this. But I'm just a simple defense attorney! Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. I've had this dream before, some place, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today I stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. Hello, this is Phoenix White. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, White. <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Oh! Now listen up. You better get in guard guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slide bag and not guilty, I don't forgive you, ever. My Phoenix. Phoenix! My. My. How's my. I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, yeah, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer the worst of times are when you have to force, force your biggest smiles. But you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please! There's nothing left! Not here, not anywhere! <laughs> the accursed thing God again! Will you leave me alone? Look, don't go anymore. I mean it. You really mean that? That gumshoe. I, I, I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? Then let me join the investigation team. If we're chasing after the killer, pal, then you have some sort of lead. Sorry, but right now we've got zero lead on the guy. But we're not going to give up, gumshoe. Until the trial is over, this event is handed down. We're going to do everything we can to find the killer. If we can get Mayor out. Then you can get and guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer? If you go at Mr. Edgeworth with everything you've got, then you can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, believe in us. We're going to give it all we've got. Just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshu. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world. You have it in abundance. Yeah. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the child last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, and I know it. Hmm. 
Oh, he's now in session for the child, Mr. Matt Engel. The fence is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Now, as I recall, he has the session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what it, of exactly was Miss Agent Andrews' role in this murder. That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Miss Urgent? Would you please inform the court in the rece today's proceedings? Agent Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Angard. Then, and then proceeds to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel semi costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm, and you're saying that she is guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. This Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the course engine to this card. What is that? It looks like it's sharp. This is a calling card of a certain assassin. Assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Carida was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt Engel. What a surprising set of events. I would think this... I think it, it's becoming commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time. So I know that everything Edrev has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can. At least until Maya is safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edrev. Prosecution calls the defendant mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Now then, with this, can they occupation, please? Oh, okay. I'm a, a Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's. I guess I'm sort of a lousy manner to him in a way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Powers, please, you don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, but sorry, uh, but I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you're really defending to me. Is this correct? Yes. I, I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually go to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you asked. Now then, I would like you to please satisfy about when you went to Miss Edgar's room. Okay, sure. With it to Matt's room. After the all ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing in there, in front of the room, still in his Nico Semi costume. He was talking with someone. At first, I thought it was a bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of place Mr. Powell's testimony, and talking with a bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person Mr. Edgar was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy, what are you implying? Well, Mr. White, let's have your cross examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap! Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just going to have to charge in head first, right? Hmm. Okay, now it's a bit odd the order that we have to um, do these uh, <laughs> presses. So I'm just going to press the first, but then I'm going to skip ahead to some of the other presses and go back and forth. Th this will make sense later, you'll see. <laughs> Defense is defendant's room? Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother sort, and I want to say congrats. What was wrong? Why did you stop? <laughs> Mr. White, w w what is it? You're going to try and trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> I... I know I'm just a poor, unpaid action star, but... But... I'm not the killer. Uh, no one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please, don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into a bad guy. Every time? Witness, I will personally talk to the fence at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue your testimony. Sorry. <laughs> So you enter the different room, then what? Wait, wait a minute! When the hell did I suddenly turn to the bad guy here? <laughs> Hold it! Are you sure that was Matt Engard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing a nickel semi-max then. If 
that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And, what was the defendant doing standing in his own room? Okay, now for this statement, I actually want to skip, because there's no point doing this one now, not until we press the 4 statement. Yeah, it's a bit awkward with this one. So we're going to press the 4th one instead. You saw two of them? The bellboy and the defendant together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, do you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? But that, that, but that's a perfectly normal thing to do. So, how long did he watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. Okay, now press the first statement. Yeah, I know it's a bit odd, but trust me, there's a method to my madness. At first? What do you mean by that? I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. White? How am I supposed to know? Hey, wait a second. Actually, Mr. Powers, only a few minutes ago, you stated. Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bird boy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip giving incident itself? Uh, yeah, that's it. You know your job. Hmm. Mr. Redruff? Yes, you are. This bird boy, he was an ordinary one, wasn't he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Hmm. Okay, Matt gave the bellboy a tip. Now, this is a new statement to press on now. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Uh, well, you see, that's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was, it was, the, it was because the tip really shocked me. How much... How much it was? But that's when something even more surprising happened. The boy boy was putting the tip he put in his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Hmm? I'm afraid I don't follow at all. It sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I'm which one of his shocking moments I should ask about. Okay. So the one... So, basically, um... Uh, So you can either end guard's bellboy's face or end guard's tip. So we're talking about the tip, because that's what we're talking about. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Um, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court about how much would say the defendant gave to the bellboy? How honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat wall of cash. A wall of cash? Ah, oh, wait, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat wall of cash. It would be called a tip, your honor. Hmm. The judge is beginning to look both suspicious at of this. So, actually, it doesn't matter which one you pick, because we're trying to prolong the trial. So we need to reject him because we can. Objection! The defendant is a superstar. That kind of tip is typical fair for people like him. <laughs> are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? If I could receive a large ball of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? He's got a point. I didn't even get paid, let alone rolls of cash for all my hard work. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, so supposing that wall of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, your honor. Payment? Is it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Joan Corrida. Then... Then... Then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, 
He was the assassin. Hold your horses now. Mr. Edgeworth, you don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, your honor? I have here the card Shelly the Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelly the Killer? He is the person the police special investigation team have been chasing for ages. I'm certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelly the Killer. Really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just sticks in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bird boy again later on, on that night. What? <laughs> Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Why the way? <laughs> the second time. Okay. This time, I was in the hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when the bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean John Corrida's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin. I'm sure of it. I mean... <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. <laughs> Let us first establish this bellboy was truly Mr. D. Killer. Then we shall see. Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. If that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. White, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. <laughs> uh, this is not nothing rather. <laughs> okay, so it's actually the fourth time to press on, but we're pressing the others anyway. And what time was it? Uh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ends around 8 p.m., right? <sighs> and I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that, and then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 10 past 8 p.m. by that time? You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? Sorry. I thought I could maybe catch Matt and save my congrats. Hold it! Are you certain it was the same bellboy? Yeah, how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform after all. But you see, well, he had those stitches in his face. Ugh. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Hmm, so which room did the bellboy come out of? The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the pretty, really pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was John Corrida, right? Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hmm. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Okay, now this is the one we really want to press. Hold it! Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? White, white, white. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging things he's going to say next. <laughs> uh, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart and he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call it a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm, I agree that is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers just my slide? So basically, you can slide or uh, choose a trial or fast one. Remember, we got to try and make this trial last as long as humanly possible until <laughs> until Gumtree can finally we finally find Maya. So let's do that. There is nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy, but there really, really is. There really, really isn't. <laughs> If you two are done being school children, bull boys are for room service. It is easy for them to be empty handed ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness previous statement be as supplemented with into one. Ah! Edgeworth! Are you going to do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see, very well. This will recognize and grant the prosecutor's request. Mr. Powers, if you can amend your testimony, please. Uh, yes, sir. 
I thought it was kind of strange for Bilbo to come out of a guest room empty-handed. So, on this statement we need to present either the glass, the wine glass, or the crime photo. So, yeah, but here's the thing though, I'm presenting this glass because it's not the glass itself, it's what's under the glass. <laughs> you see soon enough. Objection! Mr. Powers? Y yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bell boy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He all those stitches and, and... So? A baseball has stitches? Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? No. Well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look at here. This is the crime scene? There's a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Guido's body. The liquid inside the glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what the top of the table in the lower right corner here... Can everyone clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it? The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Carido's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ugh. But that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left the dead body in the room. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Carido was already dead at that time? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? I blame you for leading me down this route. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say, empty-hand-ed. I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? What? The bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black, leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves? Why didn't you mention them earlier? I'm sorry, tip my mind. Oh, boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, got the focus. I can't get lax here. <laughs> so what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Bright, that bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather? Are you saying all oh, football is suspicious because they are made of leather? No. Oh. <laughs> but that mean, but that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ah. So it seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue the rest of your testimony. The West? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. Their second meeting. After leaving John's room, the doorway went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left, without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? Yeah. I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I say you saw too much! And all of it was suspicious to high heaven! Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. White? Your cross-examination, please? Yes, go on there. Okay, now the thing is though that it's actually a sex for me to press on, but we do it more than once. You'll see soon enough. Hold it! Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Excuse me? I may be a poor and the pay acting star, but even I went stooped to spying. Now I think the point is, where do you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Um, um from the door of the bathroom with my left eye. It's all sneaky spy like. 
I knew you were spying. Please, does it really matter if he was doing it all over or unhandily? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. Hold it! I said, hold it! Um, okay. That's better. Ahem. What kind of statement is that? Please let me give, him give a few more details. Oh, um, okay. Hmm, I should probably ask him one question at a time. Okay, so yeah, here's the thing. We need to do this uh, multiple times. Ask about the, um, the person inside, and then he's asking that afterwards. Doing these two things uh, actually help amend the statement. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you say you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Wingard's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. Wingard himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing. So I could do the other statements, but I actually want to um, go back to this statement again. Because we need to do it twice. Okay, so this time asking ask about this something. Um, he gave something to this person? Uh, yeah. And what was this something? <laughs> if I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, will I? But this implies if something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. Well, that's a semi testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, what you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth. Is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is almost important. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm, Mr. Powers? Please try to remember what it was that Hellboy handed off. Mm, well, let's see. I think it was... No. Remember, please add your testimony. Yes, sir. Hmm, if I saw it again, I could say what I'm sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. Hmm. In this case... I think you might be able to help with that. You might have something like that. Let's have a look. A figurine. A wooden bear shaped figurine. It's covered in many thin cuts. Ah, this must have been it. Objection! What was the point of the pregnant pause? <laughs> Where did our objector come from? Well, speak up. Um. It was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. White, when you say, please spit it out. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, that something you saw, was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's a something. Wow, Mr. White, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Matt Ungard's mansion. At the defendant's house? What does this mean? It's simple, your honor. Shade the kid at in his room. And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found in Mr. Edgar's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, your honor. Mr. Edgar is the killer's client. Order, order, order! I said order! Mr. White, this is the most unfortunate time of events for you! Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's, it's, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have been later. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth 
rid of I almost forgot that he knew about it too. And I think it is clear that there is no need for us to continue this trial. I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. White? There are still a few points left we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. White, what questionable points would you expect to explore further? So, uh, basically... So first ask uh, the person who received the bear. There was one thing in Mr. Power's history that was very unclear, and that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave me... Oh, sorry. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. We can't be sure of... Ah! What is Mr. Power? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so, I remembered. Um, I remember we took the bear. Well, what? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but, the arm. It was the Nicholas Samurai's arm, I swear it. You've got to be kidding! <laughs> Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was Nicholas Samurai. Order, order! It looks like you've dug your own grave, yet again. How many times is that today? I must count! So the person who took this little bear was a Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, the end guard is a Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the fence, we made it all the clearer. What am I supposed to do now? Mia, help! We don't have time to act thus. We've got to find another angle to attack this from. Hurry! Now, we. Your Honor, again, Mr. White, we've already removed any and all questionable areas of testimony. For a time, we were moved from this court, Mr. White. I have to find something. Even one little point will do. There are, there are still questions left unanswered. What are you trying to pull? <laughs> okay, so last time we talked about the person who received the bear. But this time, the bear itself. This is the other one. Don't talk about the power of the testimony, that, that's um, not the one we, we want. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear, Mr. White? This was found in Mr. Edgecard's mansion. However, Mr. Edgecard was arrested at the hotel that night, which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh. I think you has already figured out what I'm trying to say. Is it possible that it was Mr. Ongard who took this bear to his mansion? What, what, why? That's very true! We didn't consider that point, Mr. White. There was no way to hide wise for the defendant to have taken their bear, this bear home. Phew! If that's reverted, it... <laughs> uh, no. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. White. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember when you muttered to yourself at Engard's mansion. We have this room completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That brother, all this time, he was the killer. The killer and Engard were working together, so to speak. And the killer was hiding at Edgar's mansion. As its brother. What a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Engard Mansion by the killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Engard had him do so. I assume because it would have had been the police found it during the investigation. Hmm, well Mr. White, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there ever going to attack at all? I think we've heard enough.
we now know why this bear threw him was the defendant's mansion, as well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in this room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to get the murder was Mr. Matt Engard. I see no reason for this charge to continue. Therefore, I will hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. White, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any objections, Mr. White? Well, should I? So, basically, um... Be choose a uh, ways an objection. I will now let... There is only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I left is one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe that my client is his same as his client. Reason number one, he accepted the bare figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at Engard's mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. Uh, is this all you have? Well, right then, Mr. White, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client, and therefore the real murderer? So, we need to go to profiles, and I hate to do this, but we need to buy time. There's only one other person, and that is Adrian Andrews. Yep. Remember that it was proved that she was in the room there last night, so she could be connected to it. Of course, obviously it's not true, but we need to buy time. Take that! Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt and God for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel semi costume. <gasps> then, then the nickel semi arm that I saw, that could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. Wingard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Wingard's mansion. It was a well day trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in this defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount it. Possibility either. Hmm. What is this trial? Come on, you can tell Engard did it. I can't believe the offense of a ghost of ours to pin guilty to someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something quick at it. It's murder of all things. This has to save Maya. This has to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is my one fight I can't give up on. Order, order, order. All the parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor, for the benefit of the defense, I'm going to play along with this what if game. His what if game, Mr. Edra? The execution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. White, even you must have thought it strange and wondered why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specifically bring that bear to Engard's right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. I'm sure that once the court knows its insignificance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts about Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Andrews, Agent Andrews herself. I see. Well then, the court will take a, a short 10 minute recess. Because who should repair it? It's witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. Oh yeah, don't worry. Even though it says recess, it isn't like a save in between. It isn't over yet. <laughs> oh, I knew what to go to the whole hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation, you tried to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Ah! I swear this demon will pay! Mr. Nick! 
Powers? Where's Mia? I... I don't know. A really strong power suddenly caught her away. A really strong power? Oh, Mr. Nick! Your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to patch onto. Phew! That's good, pal. Well, what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and Maya are? Um, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time! We just had one. You mean a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself. I've got to keep the child going until Maya has been rescued. I have just run out of luck this time. Is all our hope for naught? A tent? Huh? A tent? I can see a circus tent. Mia? It looked like Maya was unconscious until a few minutes ago. As soon as she wake up, she calls me. So it was Mia that called you away. She locked in a dusty little room right now. And I can see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe! Is there a circus in town right now? Uh, there's only one, pal. The very big circus. Mary is somewhere within a 300 feet foot way to the main tent. W what? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. Around a 300 foot radius from the main tent. Hurry! And? And? I can see a mailbox under the window, just outside. Gumshoe! There's also a mailbox! Oh? Okay, but what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. I feel like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so? I heard her. I'm in an old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you there, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia. Mia's not hurt, White. She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Come shoot, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only out of time before Mia's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. <laughs> Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to the serious client. And this one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager. Adrian Andrews to the stand. Who in the witness is accused of tampering or obstruction of justice? However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You, you have seen it before? That's right, it's only natural the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please not in the course to this bare secret? Alright. Why? Why does she? The bare figurine. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. It's that a center is a small cavity with just enough room to store in a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So this figurine? It's a container of sorts, is it? Yes. This could be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes. This is superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes. I nearly forgot. We're beginning cross examination, Mr. White. It looks like there really was something to that bear after all. In this case, we need to pres we need to press all of uh, we need to press every part of it because she knows more about that bear, not just what it actually is. A puzzle? That's why. Um, but it looks like an ill-known figurine. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess this was a puzzle. So, what kind of puzzle is this exactly? So you can take it apart. How would you wrong go about doing that? Well, you first turn his tail to the right and then you push it in. Oh, yes I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, 
This is most interesting. A boy and his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. <laughs> Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So, what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? Hold it! And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It's a souvenir from a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this, this was a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for John. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. With this, let's continue with your testimony. Hold it! So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only well, we the two of us, Joanna and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland. So I doubt there are many people in the same bear in this country. But this looks like it can be easily broken. Especially if someone wants to get what's inside. Well, it's a toy, but it can never be the same again once it's been broken. Hold it! What else knows? Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewel bo jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as John never told anyone either, the only t the only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Engard didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Hmm. Well, Mr. White, I think even you have come to realize that there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewel box. Hmm? Now we have agreed to this point, there's the one logical question that can be done next, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next, witness. Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. Hmm, there's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a, a note. I don't think we need to guess at what that is, do we, Mr. White? It's the suicide note. The, the suicide note? The suicide note by John Carita's former manager, Celeste Impacts. Until now, no one knew of his whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, John Carita himself. It seems their Simbax has very beautiful handwriting, and she just says beautiful signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Order! Witness! Did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from John. Well, let's go with this body. I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But. I couldn't find it anywhere, because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edra's pace. So now that the suit on there has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it's only appropriate the content of the note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it, and I was going to burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. Hmm, Jesus' voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her notes, Celestine Bax left to us a record of all that had happened to her, about being used and then be thrown away by Engard, about being engaged to Corita and God's role in destroying that. And about how did you decide in the despair to end it all? And that's all that Instinbex had to say. <laughs> there is one thing I would like to stay, stay here. Prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. Engard. 
Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Is that correct, witness? Yes, on that night of the murder, John was going to make the contents of that note public. After the post semi show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word, Matt Engar varies above all else is refreshing like a spring breeze image, which is why you have to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. Ugh, this is really bad. It's in God's fault that woman killed herself. And this time, we were once to tell us this woman to stop us revealing that. How terrible, what a selfish person. I guess there are slime boy lawyers out there who will defend these creeps too. There is no room for doubt here. Mrs. E. Killer's client gold has obtained a suicide vote. And the only person who needs us to know that badly is the defendant. If let's not forget that the bear with the note inside the fence was inside the fence house. It seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Ugh! How am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Come sure to call yet. So you know what you must do. I know, I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay. There are two deadly pieces of evidence, the green and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of the situation through one of these. The gavel's already in the foot of his hand, Phoenix. Hurry! Hmm. Okay, so basically, um, we have two deadly weapons in possession. So, um... So you either pick the figurine or the suicide note. It's either one. Uh, let's pick the suicide note. Uh, yeah. Again, it's really matter which one it is. Objection! It's either one. Please wait your one. Oh man, look at that boy. He's still going at it. It's like he doesn't care what he's trying to get killed off the hook. I think you want to believe that Matt and Guard killed all the Tainless Note. Yes, that is correct. But the set seems a little strange. In fact, I think there is a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Miss Corrida until the night of the murder. If that is the case, I say that Matt and Guard could not have known what was written on this note. No, I didn't think of that that way. Exactly. But I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. No one in the white mind would kill for a note without first knowing what, was, what it said. Order, order, order! You, you make a valid point, Mr. White. Mr. Redra, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Huh? The fence seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It's a very small video camera, Your Honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the? I thought the spy camera was in my possession. Matt and Garn, the victim, very thought of the other as their biggest wife. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And the victim, John Corrida, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt and Guy. Order, order! Oh, uh, Mr. White. Yes, Your Honor? You mm. don't tell you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, so on. Sort of is not acceptable answer, Mr. White. I see you're confused, Mr. White. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuffed eye by its eye. But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this Gumshoe's bug sweeper. By the way, Mr. White, the defendant's fingerprints were found on the camera. Matt and Guard's fingerprints were on there? Well, Phoenix. Looks like those cameras are hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think that this is the end. 
It's very obvious that Mr. Ungard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, 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 now what's the way of thinking? Mommy, is that man the back killer guy? Just stop. Look at him. <laughs> that way he's sweating it just so it is nasty. Phoenix. Yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next? Yes. What are you going to do next? Because we're going to go like a frightened child work. I know it seems like Miss Edgar is very close to putting it in this case. But, in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There is a piece of evidence that I really should investigate. Some of you should investigate? I would really hate to see the good prosecutors go get scolded for not remembering to look into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this time is fine to understand everything. Mr. White? You don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that is talking about? I can figure out what it is that still needs to look into it. Or should I let it go? Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a long shot, but present evidence. I have an objection, Your Honor. Uh, that was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. White. Objection! Your Honor, the defendant has no intention of letting this go so easily. Are you beginning to sound desperate? That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Redruff, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, is that what I just said? <laughs> so, you tell me that I've forgotten something? You so close, Edra. But there is something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. He's talking about their suicide note. Specifically, the handwriting. Remember that he did mention that. But here's the thing about the handwriting, and you'll see soon enough. This, that is Miss Impact Suicide Note, right? Hmm. Who knows? Huh? I mean, sure, this suicide note was, was found inside this bear. This bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analysed. Oh, so... As to whether this pivot of every piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impact or not. That has yet to be even be remotely confirmed! <laughs> Mr. White, you can't seriously be suggesting- Mr. White, you- Are you saying the suicide mode is a fake? Miss Andrews, you were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Engard. You just say you didn't create a fake suicide mode and put it into this bear. How dare you! Yo, know, our defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again! There is no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever! But if it is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it! What?! Record the witness' testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could have saw the person in the witness itself. <laughs> Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You were so you could use it to frame Matt and Guard. I... I did no such thing! Objection! Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note it's a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Objection! Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scrap of paper of evidence. That means that the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution! Grr! <laughs> That's enough! Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? It is the defence has stated. The handwriting has yet to be analysed. If that's the case, it seems yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impo that's impossible! This isn't good, Phoenix. We're just going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Mario will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. 
I'm going to move this prosecution and defense further investigate. How do I know it's my butt? That's another trying to buy more time. And God is guilty. Look, anything can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> I was saying guilty. What is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello? A Gumshoe? Oh, what is with what is with him? What's with that side? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He yeah He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal, I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there's some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found this hideout, pal. But the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm going to keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry, I just need a little more time. But, don't tell we don't. We don't have any more. It's not good. Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. White, I can't force to come to this is far end. Oh, what is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I can't do that. Mr. White, would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. We may take your phone call after. Hold on, Your Honor. Pedro, catch! Take that! Mr. Pedro, please, you got to buy us some more time. Court is in session. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying, Mr. White, this is a court of law. I I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I am reluctant to do this. However. It appears I have no choice but suspend proceedings until tomorrow. This, this time I really can't do anything! Court is now adjourned for the day. Objection! Please, wait! You're on it! Edgeworth? Why is it Mr. Edgeworth? I will request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform necessary tests in this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourn for the day and then we reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30 minute recess. But be advised, I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. Right! Well, what's going on with my situation? The killer. It looks like he got away again. 13 minutes? He got fired during that time. Ugh. Report! Uh, go ahead. Is that you, Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time. Just spit it out. Uh, White. Right. Looks like we just missed them, sir. But the killer left a few things behind the accident and the rush to get away. A few things? Can you use any of them as evidence? Uh, oh, oh, I thought you'd ask, pal. I've got the things he left in white. I mean, right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. You don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, I tried to suffer around. What? Well, I'm not a detective any anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I got to put the law on hold over there. Sounds bad. I hope he doesn't get into a trouble over this. In my hands of junk car, I say it'd be about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. Alright. Just get here in one piece. I'm on the mission and no one can stop me, sir. No one. I'm putting out all the stops and winning every red light. Uh, I said that by the murderer. Huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decided enough to end this. Uh. Hey, what's wrong? Did the gumshoe? Answer me. 
No one can stop me. <laughs> what happened? It sounded like he had an accent. His cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. We have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken. He wasn't driving a patrol car, so there's no way to read it. Also, if we don't get those items before they do, Peter will take possession of them. No! We can't let that happen! Well, if there is a way we can find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Why? Oh, why did the gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is? Ah! There is a way! <laughs> it's pretty sneaky, actually. That's right! There is a way! What? How? I'm sure we can find out gumshoe with this. Go to profiles and remember. Remember that Francisca said that she put a tracking device on Gumshoe, so that way he'd always know where he is. So we can use that. Take that! Why are you bringing that Francisca to me? Oh, I see! I should encounter with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Francisca. Does she even want to help us? Edgeworth, what is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty, but what am I doing now? I'm paying the girl into someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say defense Fe Attorney Phoenix White chooses death. White, it doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Maybe you did your job well or not. That can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. A verdict. Is what's with Edgeworth ready? Yes, bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. It says extremely urgent. We'll probably finish with an handwriting analysis. I have to go take the call. In the meantime, think hard about what you must do. Okay, foof. Seriously, we keep putting all these, <laughs> yeah, we keep putting all these clues out of thin air to try and help us out, but we really have no choice. <laughs> but uh, things got even more crazy. We still haven't found Maya, but perhaps with some of the evidence we can get for Detective Gumshoe, we could be able to help out. But he got into a little accident. Hopefully, the tracking device that uh, Miss Von Karma has on him, we can find him in time. But tomorrow will be the finale, basically. It'll be the last part of the game, the final part of the trial. Uh, how this all end? We have to wait and see. But with that, here's Master 347. Game is like the RG the platformer. Stay classy.